Um, from the classic cheese <laughs> toasty to a baguette with the works, how good is a Sanger? Mm -mm -mm. Mm. Well, this morning we've got the simple steps you can take in the kitchen to make the humble Sambo yes. even better. Oh, Nine look at that. Honeys, Jane DeGraff joins us from Sydney. Before we start, you yeah. can scan the QR code on your screen to get all of the recipes we're about to see. How cool is that? How Let's, cool go. Is that Let's go. Let's uh, go. Jano, you've sent over some samples. We've got them here. Let's begin with the uh, the Reuben sandwich. Okay, so the Reuben's one of my favourites, and what I love about it is it really lets you rely on the structural integrity of the bread that you're using. Because if you use a really good sourdough, it means you can cram all those flavours in there, and a sourdough will hold together much better than, say, white bread or brioche or anything like that. Because you've got a more robust bread, you can really cram things in there. The other thing that's important is, because you're using cooked meats, you want to get some crispness, crispness back in there, and yeah. you do that with all the pickles. So it's about layers and textures mm. and knowing your bread, and if you've got the right bread for what you're doing, then you you layer in all those different textures and you'll have the most fantastic sandwich. My mum used to do corned beef, which is the Reuben, um, and uh, she, she really did. I, I love my mum to death, but she really butchered it. Um, oh. It was awful. <laughs> uh, with white onion sauce and just disgusting. Um, but you do it. You do it very differently. Tell us. So I do, I do my silver side in the slow cooker and you put it in with some brown vinegar and some onion and some carrot and you ah. cook it on low for six hours and then when you get it out, it absolutely falls apart, Yum. which makes the texture perfect for putting in a sandwich because the worst thing that happens when you bite into a sandwich is when you've got stringy bits that aren't bite-sized and you try mm. and pull it away and everything comes out and falls apart. No well, one wants that. No. So silver side cooked really slowly, cooked right down, is actually perfect for a Reuben because it all starts to fall apart, which means that you can get a good mouthful, pull away and it yep. doesn't pull everything to pieces. Well, Mum's silver side used to bounce off the floor. Oh. Uh, was that overcooked? Oh, uh, what about classic I'm cheese? I'm sure she did a good job. Classic cheese toasty? OK, so the, again, when I was talking about the structural integrity of the bread before, we've got some really robust breads, but we all know that our white bread tends to be quite soft and floppy. What you want to do is put some structure back into that bread when you're making a cheese toasty, and to do that, you want to crisp up the outside. So butter it with some mayonnaise on the outside or some butter. That will crisp up the bread again and make oh, it nice and toasty. Yum. Or you can put a piece of bacon on the outside, and as that crisps up in the toaster, Ooh. that will give some structure back to your bread again, which is fantastic. It means wow. you can pick the whole thing up and eat it. Wow, wait. So, You're again, it's about making sure that bread and everything holds together. Mm -hmm. Now, you've got, also got some tips for using leftovers. OK, so the next thing you want to know is if you are using leftovers, so I'm a big fan of using leftover roast to make a sandwich. Yeah. And what you want to do there is, because all the vegetables are kind of soft and there's a lot of moisture in them, you'll need to waterproof your bread. And again, you do that by buttering the bread, this time on the inside, so butter or mayonnaise or mustard. And what that does is stops the moisture sucking into the bread and everything falling apart. So you can make a really, really epic, beautiful baguette like that, Aww. but it won't go foggy and fall apart because you've used the mustard or the butter or the mayonnaise to waterproof your bread. It sounds it sounds kind of funny, but that's essentially what you're doing when you put a spread onto the bread. And quickly, you've got a veggie option as well, don't you? Oh, yes, I love this. Panini is great for this because it's long and flat Panini. and it lets you really layer everything in. Again, what you need to do is when you're using vegetables, you need to waterproof the bread. A panini is great because you can actually cram quite a lot in. What I wanted to say was it's, it's important to get all those layers and textures in there, but don't overfill. So if you've got a nice long flat loaf, spread everything out. Make sure you get all the layers in there, but don't overfill because that's another thing that makes a sandwich fall apart. If you've got too much stuff, make yourself a second sandwich so yeah. you can have double the fun and it won't that's fall right. apart. Jane DeGraff, you're a genius. We love you. For the full recipes, head to ninehoney.com.au. It's a fabulous website. Or scan the QR code on your screen, as we always say they work. Mm -hmm.